everybody, it's Sally. I just wanted to say good morning. It is my 23 week update. 23rd week was yesterday morning and um, didn't feel good yesterday so I didn't want to get on the scale. I was pretty bloated up. I didn't feel good. But anyway, got on it this morning and I'm very excited to report. Drum roll please. No, I'm not at goal. No, I didn't lose 100 pounds. I uh, have left the 170 family, the number family. I hated math as a child, but I always associate the familial relationship between 10 numbers in a group. So that is the number family. I have left the number family 170s. Goodbye. Aloha. And uh, I am firmly ensconced in 160 land, 167.8. I had a 3.4 pound loss this week. I never lose like that. I lose two pounds on a good week, um, sometimes one pound. Uh, of course, I am almost six months out. Uh, a couple more weeks, a few more weeks, I'll be six months out. This is my 23rd week. 26 weeks will be six months. Um, and I'm really excited. That really, I knew it was going to, I was hoping I'd break in, but I didn't know I'd break in quite that far. And that was very encouraging to me. Uh, still going to the gym. Uh, I've given the gym a little more thought this week. Some things appeal and some things don't. Um, I got myself some new gym shoes last week and they're wonderful, wonderful. I didn't even have to buy wides. I was there. I don't know what they are. Axis, Asus or something. And uh, they feel great and uh, and they've kept my, I was having ankle issues. I was twisting it in um, Zumba class and even that jerking around and moving your feet really fast. It really twisted my ankle a lot of times and messed it up the back, and um, which keeps me from even walking, wanting to walk the dog. So anyway, I'm kind of going to focus more in on the muscle toning, the body pump, um, yoga, uh, and walking my dog, and uh, the elliptical, which I have now come to have great fondness for, the elliptical machine, which I never would have thought before. So if I really want to do some aerobic, I'm going to do the elliptical. I'll probably do Zumba once a week just because it's fun. And, uh, and and that's it for my gym thing right now. I also have, where's my little machine? Here it is, except I'm confused about what I'm doing. Here's my body bug. I just got it set up about two days ago, so I don't have the whole learning curve thing down on it, but it's very helpful to me because it's really showing me what my body loses, how many calories I'm burning, um, in, in relation to what am I eating. And, and what it has shown me very clearly is that at least the last two days, because I've probably been over fixating on it, I'm not eating enough. And I knew I wasn't, but that fear of having food become something you really emotionally like again, um, I don't want to go there. I don't want to take a chance of backsliding or starting to crave food and stuff. So I, I am generally not eating a lot and I only eat pretty healthy food um, and not a lot of heavy calorie food. So I need to figure out what to do to balance that out a little more. So I don't want to over exercise and that defeats the purpose because then you don't lose then either. If you exercise in the extreme and you don't eat enough, then your body also shuts down. So I got to balance that out. But I also went to a, this weekend, I went to a craft show um, where crafters were there, obviously. And uh, my husband bought me this beautiful, beautiful thingy. I decided this was my can't remember what the name of the, the, the stone is, but it's a beautiful stone. And this little choker thingy, which I've never had one of these. They never hung right on me, but this one I kind of like. But that's not what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you this. I bought this ring. Okay, can you see? It's a ring. Can you tell that it is a fork? A little tiny fork, probably like a shrimp fork um, or pickle fork, where the man has bent up the prongs, prongs in a pattern and I he only had one and I buy from this man every time I see him I've seen him at different shows he always takes silverware and bends it into bracelets and hair things and hooky doos where you hook on the door and hang your coat or on the fridge or um, uh, I bought a little thing like this with a little alligator clip because I'm so old I can't seem to figure out I can't like you know when you're trying to hook a bracelet or something anyway I thought it was a good idea but I bought the ring because I think it's very telling and I've had people comment to me about the ring and what it does is reminds me every day that we dug our own grave with our utensils all these years and I'm refusing to do that anymore 
I mean, if anything, this is like a breakthrough. You, people talk about their badge of honor, you know, with the skin and the wrinkles. I get that. I really get that. But this is like to remind me when you go to eat, eat gently, treat your body well, eat healthy, be kind to yourself. Um, and this ring, I think, is a powerful symbol for me. It's a good image for me to keep in the forefront, and so that's where I wear it. I wear it on this finger right here. And the man who makes these makes other things. And I was wondering if, um, you know, I just want to throw this out there for the nonprofit idea. If there's any fundraising going on, I probably could get the man to give me a big price break if we bought some number of these things. This is another thing he makes. And I think it's beautiful. Again, it's a fork. He's cut off and bent up and made the prongs really beautiful. And he sells lots of different things. But the fact that they're utensils that we use to dig our own graves with, that we now have power over, it, you know, um, there's a little story card that goes with this too, and it's a pin, but I think you could actually hook it on something and make it a hanging thing. I mean, it could even be hanging here. He had earrings, little earrings, little spoons, or whatever. This story in here is called um, Keep Your Fork. And it's about a woman who always went to church potlucks, and she ate, and they always tell you, oh, keep your fork, the best is yet to come, keep your fork, meaning dessert was coming next. And she was had a, a fatal illness, and she was going to die, and she was talking to her clergy, and she said, um, when I die, I want you to put a fork in the coffin for people to see. And when they ask you why, you tell them, keep your fork, the best is yet to come. Um, so the next time you reach down for your fork, let it remind you ever so gently that the best is yet to come. And I think that's a really, that's a scenario we could probably play with um, to help with the idea of, you know, the best is yet to come. This is the beginning of our whole new lives. This is our victory over the shovel method of eating. Um, and the best is yet to come for all of our lives now that we've had weight loss surgery. I mean, I like to believe, I want to believe in fairy tales, so I want to believe that the best is yet to come for all of our lives after surgery. <clears throat> That's not true for everyone, I know, sadly. Um, but it certainly gives us one less hurdle in the way of living a fulfilled and happy life. We will have others that people can't see as obviously as two or three or four hundred extra pounds. But there will still be a little hurdles and issues when we've lost this one. When this one is gone, there'll still be another. Maybe, for most people, there'll be a few little ones. They won't be as, maybe won't be as big. Maybe it'll be bigger. But anyway, having said that, and I, I prattle on, forgive me, I just want to say I had a great week. I'm thinking about you guys. Um, and I will, I'm going to step back and let you see me really quick. Not that there's a huge difference, but this is my gym attire. There you go. I feel like the lady with the, with the bubble dance, the bubble dancer. Okay. But she would have been naked. The fan dancer. You know, back from the 20s. You guys don't know about that stuff. You're too young. But anyway, that's it. I'll see you guys next week, and uh, have a great one. Bye.